All right, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to give you some tips on how you can make your switch from Android to iPhone a little bit easier. So let's get into it. When you switch from Android to iPhone, you definitely lose a lot of different features that you might be used to. Like for example, multitasking. If you use Samsung devices, you lose things like the edge panel, you know, just a lot of different things. So for me, there's like three different things that I do to my iPhone to make it a little bit more comfortable to use and just a little bit more like my Android phones. The first thing that I'll show you is recreating the edge panel on the iPhone. The iPhone 15s and 16s have something called the action button. It's on the top left and you can press and hold that. The action button is programmable to different things. So if you go to settings and then you go to action button, you have a bunch of different things that you can choose. So silent mode, voice memos, controls, blah, blah, blah. But mainly I keep it on shortcuts and you can set it to specific shortcuts. So I'm gonna get into shortcuts after, but if I press and hold that, then boom, here is my edge panel that I recreated. As you can see right here, it says edge panel. I put the little robot emoji to signify that it's copying something from Android. And then I got a lot of different options. So in my edge panel, I have things like specific apps, like the settings app, you know, messages, then it will bring me to different messaging apps like text, WhatsApp, Messenger. Then I got Notion, Calendar, Reminders. So yeah, on my edge panel on the iPhone, I have a bunch of different apps that I use frequently. And then I also have groups of apps. So as you saw with the messaging apps, and then I have things like different functions. So it's a dip different group of things that has different apps, but also like functions like, for example, using the flashlight, auto rotate, 50% brightness, etc. And then I have an Ask Google page, which kind of mimics like the Google function on Android phones. So we'll get into how to set that stuff up. But yeah, that's one thing that I recreate the Edge panel. And then another thing that is very key to me is extra dim so i don't know why iphones don't have this feature but there's no extra dim feature on iphone so if you're in a really dark space and you have your bright iphone screen you can't put it to extra dim to make it a little bit darker to be more comfortable to use in darker situations one thing that you can actually do is enable the zoom accessibility option and add a filter to it so now when i turn that on by pressing the power button three times it activates the zoom but then it enables this filter right here so it's basically like extra dim so if i go really low then boom, look how dark it is. Turn off the zoom, and this is the lowest brightness setting, and then this is with zoom on. So you basically have extra dim on your iPhone now. So that's another key change I use when I'm switching from iPhone to Android. And then also just some more notable things, like the new control panel is actually really cool. So you can do a lot of different layouts and setups with it. You can actually adjust the size of different things. So if you hold the empty space, you can move things around, you can adjust the sizes, and you can even add so many different things. Like if I go to add control, there's a lot of options that Apple added to this. And I think that's really good and really cool. Using shortcuts, you can add different apps to your control panel as well. So like, let's say you wanna access certain apps quickly, then you can swipe down and access your control panel and then tap those apps. And then same thing, I have my edge panel here and my ask Google functionality here as well. Quick note is really nice too. So yeah, you wanna take advantage of the control panel, the new control panel that Apple added. And then another thing to take advantage of is widgets. I know you're obviously used to this on Android, but you have stackable widgets here, just like on your Samsung devices. You have that here on iPhone and you can just take advantage of, you know, stacking different widgets that you use, key functions and apps that you might use often. Like for example, going to my subscription page on my YouTube app, and then I can do that here. You know, my recent watch on Crunchyroll, and then I got my Notion app so I can see different things I can jump back into them and work on those things, or I can even add a new page pretty quickly. So take advantage of your widgets, your stackable widgets, and your control panel. All right, so now let me get into settings and actually show you how I make some of these changes. The first thing I'll show you is the accessibility thing and enabling extra dim. So you go to accessibility, then you're gonna go to zoom. You go to zoom region, turn on full screen zoom, then you go to zoom filter and then turn on low light. When you enable zoom, you might get stuck like this, but it's okay, don't panic. All you have to do is this, double tap with three fingers, it will reset. After you adjust your zoom settings in the accessibility panel, you're gonna go all the way down to accessibility shortcut. So here is where you can configure the triple click on the power button to you know access different things. Right now I have zoom enabled. So another cool accessibility feature that you can use with this shortcut on the triple tap is guided access. So basically you turn this on and then you go here. I said it's a never auto lock because the reason why I would use something like this is if I'm giving my phone to my daughter just to keep her distracted for a second, I'll turn on guided access. Basically, guided access kind of locks the phone screen on whatever app you're on. So like, for example, so now I'm a full screen YouTube video and then boom, triple tap, guided access, 
So when you start guided access, you can actually set it so that nothing, no inputs can be pressed on the phone. So no side button, no volume button, no touch, no software keyboard, no motion. So what I, for me, I turn all those things off. So now nothing can happen. So I'm touching the screen, pressing the, the buttons on the phone and nothing is happening. Guided access is just working. So basically I use this for like, if I need to do something like, and now it's just me watching my daughter by myself, I'll put on like, you know, Miffy, something she likes to watch, put it to the right volume, play the video and then turn on guided access. And now no matter what she does, the video will keep playing. She cannot turn off the phone. She cannot skip the video. She cannot turn it off. It would just work. You could probably apply that to different situations where like, let's say it's raining or something like that. You're watching a video. You don't want your screen to be disrupted. You can turn on guided access so that the screen is locked and no touch inputs from the water or something like that can impact the screen. So just a very cool options for different things. Then of course, triple tap to turn it off and press end and that's it. So going back here, you got zoom and you got guided access. You can of course add different things. So triple tap to access extra dim is very useful on iPhone if you're coming from Android. And then to go along with accessing different things through a shortcut on the iPhone, you, can, you also have access to tap in the back of the phone with a, either a double tap or a triple tap. So if you go in accessibility, then you go to touch, then you go down and go to back tap and then you have access to double tap and triple tap. So right now my, my double tap is set to edge panel. So if I change my action button, I still have access to it. So for example, double tap and then it'll bring up my edge panel like that. And then let's say triple tap for control center. So this is something that I was gonna mention earlier too. So the control center I was saying is very useful. You can add different apps. You can add, you know, different shortcuts that you create. So many different things you can add to it, but it's kind of inconvenient because at the top of the screen, you can actually use back tap to access that. So three taps, boom, control panel is open. And then I can double tap to open the, the edge panel as well. Three taps to dismiss the control panel. I think that's really cool because it allows you to access, like I said, all the shortcuts that you might put here. So it just gives you a little bit more control over your iPhone, kind of like your Android or your Samsung device where you can, you know, have so many different shortcuts in so many different ways. Okay, so now let's go to shortcuts to show you how to create a shortcut like what I have. So I actually saw this idea on Reddit and I thought it was really cool. So I figured out how to make my own. So for example, let me go to functions. So functions is a set of shortcuts that I created. Basically how you create these, this kind of shortcut where it gives you the menu, you're gonna wanna add this right here. So choose from menu with, and then you can add a bunch of different options. So when you add an item to it, to the menu, you press add new item, then you can name it obviously. And then that new item will be somewhere down here so this is where you actually like kind of create the code or like the the skeleton of the shortcut so down here the new item is here so how you add an app to it is basically you go to search actions open app then i'm going to drag it to under this so now it's under this new item right here and then i can choose the app that i want to open so that's how you add an app to your menu in the shortcuts and then let's say you want to add like a function this is 50 percent volume so i would add a new item i would name it whatever i want so 50 percent volume and then I can search for the action. So let's say I search volume and then set volume. And then you can choose the percentage, obviously. So I can choose it to be like something random, like 11%, set media volume to 11%. And now if I go here, then boom, I'll set it there. And obviously you wouldn't want to have two of them because they would like clash. So you can just delete one of the other ones if you have another one there. But that's basically the step-by-step -step process of creating your own menu like that. So I'll just show you. Plus, search menu, and then choose from menu, select that. Boom, now it gives you the layout of a menu. So it gives you two options to start, so you can actually rename them or delete them. So let's just go Instagram, and then the other one will be YouTube. And you can even put emoji and stuff like that if you want to, to have fun with it. So Instagram, you could put like a camera, boom so now i got instagram and youtube but there's actually nothing attached to them so it's an empty skeleton right now so what we want to do is search for actions open app that's a recent one that i use so it showed up there and you drag it to each one of those so i'm just going to grab two of them drag it to instagram and youtube now choose app this is for instagram so i'm going to search instagram boom and then this one is for youtube boom and then you can also name it so I'll name it Edge Panel 2. You can rename it within the menu as well. 
and this is also so you can actually rename it as well like in the menu and then this name is what siri will use to recognize it so you can tell siri to use these shortcuts that you create on your phone as well which is also really cool so let me just call this edge panel 2 so boom and then i can change the icon and the color so i'm gonna put make it like orange and then give it binoculars why not and that is it so now my shortcut is created and if you tap it it will run and then pop up then you can also like i said set it to your action button or you can set it to be a double tap on your back of your phone or a triple tap so that was the edge panel so now i want to show you how i set up my google actions ask google basically controls the smart things in my house turn on all lights turn off all lights turn on tv turn off house pause the tv play the tv Samsung remote. That's not that's not necessarily a Google one, but it opens up the Samsung Smart Things app. Then I got Ask Google for the weather, the Tesla app, Sleep Music. So it plays Sleep Music on YouTube Music and more apps, so I can go back to my other menus, the Edge panel. So basically, how you set this one up is you do the same thing. So you choose choose from a menu to start with your shortcut, and then you can name all the different functions that you want to add. And you go down to the functions and you just basically add the things that you want them to do. So for all of the ones that use the Google Assistant, you want to make sure you have the Google app installed and you're logged in and all that stuff. But you go to actions and you search um, ask Google, then you choose it. And then down here, you can put you can write in the question. So think of it as if you were asking Google normally. So, for example, if I want to ask Google to turn on the TV, then I'll write turn on the tv so boom now i created that and i'm just going to drag it to whatever item on the menu this applies to and then once i do that now i have it set up so this is all these are all my commands ask google to turn off all the lights turn on tv turn off all electronics pause the tv etc so boom that is that just like how i showed you that with the edge panel one it's the same thing but just different functions so now if i access my ask google menu then i can turn off all lights so let's let's do the weather So boom, it just asks Google what the weather is. And then I can do sleep music. And as you see, it's typing, it's typing this to Google and it's doing it. Whatever you typed as the question, it is typing it in the Google app to ask the Google assistant to do this thing or ask it that question. And then as you can see, it started, right? So open YouTube music and play sleep playlist. So it's playing specific plays I have on YouTube music and it just works. That's the way that you can use the Google Assistant even though you're on iPhone. I essentially have like four or five different menus that I use and each one I include the ability to access the other menu. So let's say I open the edge panel but I actually want the ask Google menu then I can access that from the edge panel. If I don't want the ask Google menu then I can go back to the edge panel. And then if I go to functions but I don't want the functions, I want to ask Google, I can just go there. So I, I have the, the option to go to the different menu within the menu that I opened. So I'll show you how I do that quick. At the bottom of the ask Google menu is more apps. Basically what you can do is you can make one of the options run another shortcut. So you just go to actions, type in run, run shortcut. And then when you add it to the thing, you have the option of choosing the shortcut. So these are all the shortcuts on my phone that I created. And then I can choose the shortcut. I chose run edge panel. And now it will run the edge panel from that option. So even though it's the ask Google menu, I still have access to my edge panel. And of course, this is very like baseline, like very simple type of stuff that you can do to mimic the edge panel and different things on Android. You can do a lot of different things in the shortcuts app. So I suggest you get familiar with it learn it and just you can literally like do a lot with the shortcuts app it's actually very cool there's automations i don't have any automations right now but even just the shortcuts themselves you can go hard with them and do a lot and then you can also put them as widgets on your home screen to access them very quickly without pressing the action button or tapping the back of your phone or using it from here the idea for me why i have all these menus set up is that on my Android phones, I can access so many different apps and functions from anywhere on the phone very quickly. And I wanted something similar like that on iPhone. So when I'm using the iPhone, you know, you don't have the swipe and hold gestures like Samsung does. You don't have the edge panel. You don't have a quick split screen, quick multitasking. So I want to be able to access apps wherever I am on the iPhone. The edge panel kind of helps with that. I can tap the back of the phone and then there is Chrome right there. Instead of, you know, having to leave the app, go to chrome even though chrome's right here but like let's say it's another app that i use frequently leave the app type in search and then type the app or go to the app i can just open that up 
and then boom, there is the app that I want. So these are just some tips on how you can make your iPhone a little bit more like your Android phone for somebody who is switching to iPhone or has to use iPhone for work purposes. This is, these are just some tips to make you feel a little more comfortable coming from an Android device. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below and hopefully this video was helpful for you. But until the next one, we are out. Peace.